Jesus wants to speak, so I'm going to speak with Jesus. Come divine will, come speak in my speaking. Come listen in our listening. So I'm just experimenting with this new way of doing these videos. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you like this way of doing it, or if you prefer just me and my Pustinia. Um, my daughter introduced me to this, so let's see how it goes. So, volume 35, December the 25th, 1937, Christmas Day, a Christmas gift from Jesus. And this is what Jesus has to say about the battle against weaknesses. Therefore, I would like that you also do not occupy yourself with your weaknesses and with your miseries and with your evils. Because how much more one thinks of oneself, so much more one feels weak. So many more evils drown the poor creature, and the miseries tighten themselves stronger around her. Think about climbing a mountain. The, one of the rules as far as I know of mountaineering is you don't look down, right? So you keep your focus on the journey up, and it's the same in the spiritual life. Don't look down. Don't look down into the abyss out of which you have climbed, but keep your focus upon the kingdom to which you are going. Of course, different rule if you're preparing for confession, then you have to call to mind your sins, but also you ask the Holy Spirit to help you think of your sins, your secret hidden sins. By thinking of them, your weaknesses, weakness feeds weakness, and the poor creature goes falling more. The evils take more strength, and the miseries make her die of hunger. Instead, with not thinking of them, they themselves, by themselves, they fade away. So what are you going to think of if you're not thinking of these weaknesses? Instead, all to the contrary, with good. One good feeds the other. Good. This is like the, the story of the Indian and the wolf. Got two two wolves inside of him doing battle. And the young Indian boy is saying, you know, which one wins, which one wins? And there's a good wolf and a bad wolf. And the Indian says, whichever wolf you feed. One act of love calls you the love. One abandonment in my volition makes one feel in oneself new divine life. Okay, Lord, I abandon myself to your divine will. Simple as that. I abandon myself to your divine will. And that, that causes you to feel in yourself new divine life. So that the thought of good forms the food, the strength, in order to do the other good. I.e., I abandon myself to your divine will. I make an act of resignation to your divine will. Therefore, I want that your thought does not occupy itself with anything other than to love me and to live in my will. Lord Jesus, with your will, I love you. Lord Jesus, with your love, I love you. With your will, with your love, I place my I love you in every tree, in the ocean, in the sun that we see in these beautiful images. Yeah. My love will burn your miseries and all your evils and my divine volition will constitute itself as your life. And with your miseries, he will make use of them in order to form the footstool where to erect his throne. So you're the throne of the divine will, the throne of God, will be erected above your miseries and your weaknesses. This is St. Paul. You probably know this one very well. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness so when you're feeling weak you focus your attention on god this is from a book called uh, spiritual combat chapter six all our strength for conquering the enemy derives from distrust of self and confidence in god jesus has just taught you how to destroy your weaknesses follow the advice Fiat.